Welcome back to Brandon Sports Talk. In today's episode, I have the privilege to interview TJ Edwards, a sports photographer and sports reporter. How are you doing today? I'm good, man. Sun's out. It's beautiful today. That's good. Can you talk about how you got started in sports photography? Uh, yeah. Um, so I joined the yearbook in high school uh, at Green Central. Um, and then, so that was like the first time I started doing photography. Uh, and then I was probably a sophomore in college and, uh, Casey Mazingo, who's a former, uh, photographer at the news Argus. Um, I shadowed her for a little bit and then I just started, started taking it more seriously, um, and just started going to more games and things like that. So. That's amazing. How did you know that you wanted to become a sports reporter? Uh, in, in 2013, so I'm a Boston Red Sox fan. Um, in 2013, the Boston Bombings happened. Uh, <clears throat> and I remember, uh, the Red Sox, they beat the Royals in their very first game back. Right. Um, and I read just a bunch of articles just about how, uh, sports, you know, uh, rejuvenated that community. Um, and so like, it was just a bunch of move, moving pieces. So, um, I don't know. I just said, oh, this is what I want to do. Like, I want to inspire people by writing and through pictures um, and just uh, allowing people to feel, you know. So that's that's pretty much how I started. Can you talk about your experience shadowing Casey Mazingo? Yeah, yeah. Casey, uh, Casey's awesome. Um, she's really talented. Uh, I only – I went to a couple games with her. Um but they were like football games. So, but she like gave me a lot of helpful tips, um, especially shooting at night. Cause before I started shadowing her, I only shot in the daytime and night photography and daytime photography were completely different. Um, so she just gave me a lot of helpful tips. So she was, she's been great. Um, somebody I still go to um, if I need a, if I have a question about something or anything like that. So she's great. Can you talk about your experience on the Mount Olive Tribune? Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, so so Barry Merrill is who gave me my first opportunity back in 2018. Um, I, was a, I was in Michigan uh, doing an a internship, and uh, he called me and said he needed uh, someone to, to do football on Friday nights because like, to, to, they were doing live streams. Uh, and I just wasn't in a place to only do um, live streams. Like, I also was looking for a job. And so he ended up offering me the job. And then so I came on with the Mount Olive Tribune in August of 2018. Um, and it was great, man. Like, I mean, I, I wish I would have had more people to kind of uh, learn from uh, because at the Tribune, it was pretty much – I was the only full-time person. So – everything that I learned and I was only 23 when I started. So um, everything that I learned was like pretty much like it just came from me doing it and then me experiencing it, you know? Um, so I wish I just would have had more of a team, but I mean, it helped me in the long run, you know, just to, uh, just to put all the pressure on myself to, you know, to look out for that community because the Southern end of the, of Wayne County doesn't really get that much love, you know? Um, so it was, it was great. I mean, I enjoyed it. I'm thankful for it. You know, uh, the ending wasn't, wasn't that great, but you know, that's just how, how things happen. So. Can you talk about the experience going to the UMO versus um, UMO at NC state game and how that oh, was? Yeah. 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 Dude, that was so sweet, man. Uh, that was my first, like, uh, I guess like big experience, you know, um, because I, I pretty much only did, you know, high school and then UMO games. But, you know, even on the D2 level, like UMO, UMO's games, like kind of lacked the crowd intensity. Um, but that was like the first time I was in like a big arena, you know, doing photography. And I was sitting beside a bunch of like professional photographers, you know. Um, and it was so sweet just being on the floor. Like, and I'm an NC State fan myself and I'm a UMO alumni or alumnus. So uh, just having my heart, you know, kind of being just in that place, like it was a dream come true for the, for the moment, you know, um, a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun. It was, it was exciting. 
how was it like as a fan photographing that game? Oh man, it was so crazy. Uh, Cause you know, like I said, like I'm an NC State fan. Uh, also, I'm a, I'm a, you know, all the players like Markel Johnson, you know, Kevin Keats, the coach, you know, uh, Manny Bates. But also, like just being a fan of UMO, like even though like those guys, like I can talk to you on a daily basis, like I'm still a fan of those guys at UMO. Um, and so to see see guys that I go to school with and that I hang out with. Um, playing against guys that I wish I could hang out with and wish I could, you know, talk to on a daily basis. Like, as a fan, I was just, like, on cloud nine. And then being on the floor so close to them and just hearing them talk and just, like, walking past them, like, and just experiencing the cheerleaders, the dance team, the band on the floor. Like, oh, man, dude, it was – there was nothing better. Are you going to be covering the UMO versus Wilmington – UNC Wilmington game coming up? Uh, actually, um, I'm not. I'm actually moving to Raleigh. So, um, so I'm pretty much. I think I'm pretty much done uh, with you and my stuff until unless they come to Raleigh again. But what what sports have you covered for UMO? Oh, uh, all of them. When I was in when I was in college, uh, I was a broadcaster. Uh, also, like I was a broadcaster, photographer, uh, and a producer in college. So. Um, every single sport that we have, I mean, except for wrestling and, and except for wrestling, like that's the only sport, but, um, but every other sport, uh, I've covered. Can you talk about your experience covering broadcasting for UMO? Yeah. Um, so my first year was my senior year, um, which is kind of funny that I got started so late, but, uh, the first person I worked with, uh, was Alex Hayden who Alex Hayden, if you don't know, Alex Hayden is the GOAT. Um, Alex Hayden works for Motor Racing Network. So, like, he he does NASCAR events, like, and he does, like, panels and all these other things. Like, he's awesome. But he also lives in Rosewood, so um, so he helps out UMO when he's not on the road. And uh, that was the first person I worked with. And, like, just sitting and building a relationship with him and talking to him, like, it benefited me so much still to this day, you know. Um, and then also just working with a bunch of students, you know, um, just getting to to share information, but also, like, receive information. Um, it was just, like, a, a true team atmosphere, um, and it was just great. Like, Ryan Smith, shout out to Ryan Smith at UMO for giving me the opportunity, you know, even though I came from, like, not having any opportunity, but he let me have full reins on everything. Um, and he and he allowed me to fully be myself, um, which is like that's the best way to um, I get I guess get people to to do their best is like allow them to be fully themselves. How is the experience like shadowing Alex Hayden? Uh, so I wouldn't really say it was it was shadowing Alex because he so he's he does like NASCAR, um. And so when we were both doing basketball, it was kind of like we were both learning together, if that makes sense. Um, he's just more experienced in broadcasting, but uh, but when it came to basketball and softball and other things, baseball, like, it was kind of we were learning together. But it was awesome. Like, I mean, you know, Alex has – he's been in the business for 20-plus years, you know what I'm saying? And so to to have a guy – who who walks in there and who isn't like fully on himself and he's like willing to learn but also willing to share information without being you know a butthole about it like that's like a true blessing in itself um so i'm super thankful that i got to meet alex and got to work with alex um more than anybody during my time at umo um because we definitely like when we were on the when we were on the mic we clicked we were ready to go he knew I was gonna come. I was gonna come with my A game, and I knew he was gonna bring his. You know, so that's that's always fun. Have you ever worked with Sugar Shane, the voice of the Trojan? <laughs> yeah, man. Sugar Shane is my guy. Yeah, no. Um, when I, I mean, you know, he's the PA guy for everything. So when I was sideline reporting, he was sitting beside me uh, for baseball games. When I was broadcasting, he was sitting beside me. Um, doing lacrosse, he was sitting beside me. Even when I covered the Mount Olive Hurricanes, you know, he's the voice of the Mount Olive Hurricanes, you know, like it's such a privilege for me um, to spend my time in, or to have spent my time in Mount Olive and got to work with somebody uh, who is like deeply entrenched in Mount Olive athletics, 
like Sugar Shane. Like Shane is the man. I'm super thankful for our, our friendship, um, our work relationship. Like that's my guy, always. How did you know that you wanted to get into sports videography? Um, that's kind of funny. Uh, so photography is way easier to me than video. I will say that. Um, but I don't know. I think I just like, you know, when I did, so when I did my internship in Michigan, uh, in 2018, like I was a video intern. So that's all I did. I was just doing video. Um, and so I was like, okay, well, you know, I got some experience doing video. I might as well just try it. Um, and so that's what I did. Like, I just, I just went for it. I just told myself to do it and just, you know, I just went for it, you know. What are some upcoming plans in your future for in the sports field? Um, so like I said, I'm moving to Raleigh. Um, so I'm hoping to, you know, get plugged in. Like I already have some connections uh, at, at NC State, but I'm hoping to make some more connections, you know, at Shaw and St. Augustine, William Peace uh, and Wake Tech. Um, maybe, um, you know, just to do some other stuff. Like, honestly, like, it's not going to be my job, but to, just to keep doing it, um, it's fun. Because that's a, that's the way that I build relationships. Like, I met so many of my friends that I talk to now um, through, you know, doing sports media. So, um, so I, I would love to keep that going, especially in a place like Raleigh, where there's so much, so many good high schools, um, so many good colleges. So, What advice would you give upcoming sports photographers? Um, I would say, you know, like your eye is your eye, you know what I'm saying? Like, just trust yourself, uh, because it, it, especially in the sports photography world where you're competing against so many other photographers, uh, like it's easy to look at other photographers and be like, oh, okay, I need to make my things or my images like theirs. But, uh, I would just say, just trust your eye and just go like, be you, you know what I mean? Like, like when I when I approach um, photos or editing photos or whatever, um, like I always say, what is something that I would like to see? What what do I like? You know, and that's most that's more important than what what this other photographer does. Like it's all about you. You know, um, just focus on you uh, and trust yourself. You know, because if if you're yourself, then people will vibe with you no matter no matter what. What advice would you give upcoming sports videographers? Uh, same thing, you know, video, like, especially video. So photography is a little different, but like video is definitely easy to be like, Oh, I want to make my edits and my effects and all these other things. is just like somebody else. But like, man, it's all about like, I'm going to keep coming back to this just because that's just the stage of life that I'm in. But like, you know, it's all about you. It's all about like trusting your, your uh, instinct. trust in your you know you know where can my listeners find you at on social media um you can uh follow me on twitter and instagram at shoot a teach so s-h-o-o-t-a-t-e-e-j um i don't really tweet that much on shoot a teach but you know it's okay um but you know, my pictures and stuff will, will be on both of those, my videos, whatever else. So, Thank you again, TJ, for your interview. You can find Brandon Sports Talk on Facebook at Brandon Sports Talk, Instagram at Brandon Sports Talk, Twitter at Talk underscore Brandon, and you can find me on YouTube at Brandon Sports Talk. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Thank you again for your interview, TJ. I appreciate you, brother. Thank you, man.